Uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother, just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Uh, today we are doing a recipe request that has come in from somebody called Johan Taco Cat Shoshten. Okay, the name is down here. Probably can't or haven't pronounced that properly, but I know you're not English. Um, thank you for your patience, by the way, and your request. Uh, so here we are, we're doing it, and you wanted me to do nachos with a British twist, which is good because I do not like nachos anyway, really, as they are. So we're going to do like a British theme, and I'm going to do like an English cooked breakfast kind of theme on it. You could have any time of the day, okay? So this is everything I've got. First of all, instead of using those uh, massive chunky triangular tortilla chips, I'm using crisps or potato chips, if you're in Australia, I think, or in America for sure. Potato chips, Randy! I want some potato chips, please! Ah, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'm just getting those, and I'm putting them around like this big flan pan like this, okay? I'm going to double layer them for extra security. Cha-ching! So I'm going to have some sausage, some bacon, some cheese, obviously. That is cheddar cheese. I actually live quite near cheddar, if you're interested. Um, yeah, some baked beans, some cherry tomatoes, some mushrooms, and obviously the bacon, like I said. And I'll probably whip on a little bit of Worcester sauce. And the dips are going to be tomato sauce and ketchup. We're just going to get on and make it. Um, if I haven't hit pause on a video, which I haven't, uh, no, 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 I haven't done that. Uh, hit pause on a video now, if you want to write them down. Ready, watch? Yeah, hit pause and write them down. We're just going to crack on and make this. The first thing we're going to do is get like a flan dish like this and get our crisps slash potato chips uh, on there. That is rubbish accent. Okay then folks, so the first step, like I said, is I'm getting myself a nice oven proof dish like this. In fact, this is what I'll eat it out of. I've already done one layer of my crisps. As you can see, it's all different shapes and sizes and there's little gaps. So what we're going to do is get another layer of crisps slash potato chips and get it all on there. It's going to help to give it some extra protection from the cheese and the beans and everything else that's going to go on top. Yeah, let's go for it. Extra layer right now. Beautiful, so there we go. That dish is well and truly covered in the crisps now. Hardly any gaps in there. So we're gonna get our beans on there now. First of all, and what we're gonna do also to reduce the weight of the beans on there is we're gonna drain all the sauce off so it's just the beans. Too much sauce is gonna make the crisps or chips just shrivel up and go, Aah. don't wanna do that, okay? Wanna keep those chips there, baby. Uh. Here we go then, guys. So liking this angle, view from above, huh? So I've got my beans here. I've drained as much of the sauce off as I can. I'm just going to scatter the beans along the top of the crisp slash potato chips. So get them all the way over there, fairly nice and evenly covered as much as you can, my friends. Okay, so the beans are all on top there, nice and good. I try to spread out as much as I can. So we're getting the cheddar cheese in there, and we're just going to sprinkle it on the top like that. Give it a nice, good coating. It's all going to melt together and all fuse together. And putting that in the oven just on its own is going to be very, very good, I can tell you. Um, but we're going to take it up a notch. So we're going to get the cheese on there, okay? So we're going to just keep doing this. Cheese on there. Oh my goodness. Maybe not on the floor like that. And then I'm going to cook up my sausages, my bacon, my mushrooms and my tomato. Just to put it on the top, the way the jalapenos would be, you know? Uh, cheese on top. Let's keep going. Oh yeah. Okay then folks, so behind me here I've got a griddle pan and it is on a low flame. I've got a little bit of oil in there as well, just going to work it around there. What we need to do is get our sausages a little thinner so they'll cook quicker, okay? And I'm not going to overly cook them, but I don't want to just put them on top of those nachos raw. Oh no, 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 no. I want to make sure it's all cooked through and good. So what I'm going to do is a bit that a lot of the ladies uh, like when I do this shot for some reason. And as a guy and the other blokes watching, you don't really like this. This is a spare sausage I've got. We're going to trim our sausages down. Okay, so I'm getting that pan nice and hot. I've got my sausage pieces there, which did freak me out as I was chopping them up, but it's all good. We're gonna cook these up on their own for a couple of minutes, and then we'll start to add in the mushrooms, then the bacon and tomatoes, bring it together, and it's going on our nachos, baby! Yeah. Okay, so the majority of them are brown on one side. I've flipped them over, so it's time to chuck in our mushrooms, like so. Good thing about the griddle pan is you can move it around and just add it as and when you want and control it. Less heat is this side, all the heat is in the middle. So we'll gradually get it all in there, and when it's done, it's done, baby. Okay, so the good thing about the griddle pan is I can put my sausages, like I was saying, around the edge like that. My mushrooms to one side, they're starting to cook. They're about halfway through being done. So it's time to just add those last minute extras of the cherry tomatoes. Just pour those in like that. In you go, in you go, guys. Let's just uh, push those up there a little bit. Oh, yeah. And then finally, sorry about the noise, uh, this bacon, which I'm just going to grab and just chuck in there. Cook it away, give it a little stir, break it all down. A couple of minutes on that, and it's ready to go on the nachos. 
Guys, I'm getting a little bit obsessed with this. You know like these people like in the movies, like bunny boilers that like to have all the labels turn around the right way and stuff? That's kind of like me on this. My griddle pan, I've got my little mushroom section going on. I've got the tomatoes, the bacon, and the sausages around the edge. It's all kind of cool. Most important thing is to make sure your bacon and your sausages are cooked through. And the rest, you know, the tomatoes, we just want to soften them up. The mushrooms are soft enough as it is because they went in there quite early on. So all I'm going to show you next is plonking them in with that. Yeah. Okay, my friends, I've got my cheesy beanie crispy things there waiting to be topped by our griddle pan of goodness. Let's go for it. I'm going to get a random sporadic area of tomato sausages, mushrooms, and bacon. Let's go for it, my friends, right now. Oh my goodness, that is looking good. Now, you don't always do this with nachos. Normally, you just have the jalapenos on top and you can sprinkle it with cheese if you want to, but I'm going to do that just to hold it down a teeny bit more. It's starting to look a little bit like a pizza, but uh, yeah, it's definitely crisps under there, baby. Crisps or potato chips. Okay, so I've just quickly preheated my oven. I'm going to finish it off with one last thing. You do not normally have to do this on nachos. Definitely, definitely not. But a little bit of ground black pepper on there and also some finely chopped parsley. You don't have to do that, but I'm just going to do that just to jazz it up a little bit like that. Oh my goodness, a little bit of colour right now. Let's get it in the oven. yippee dee 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 Do. All right, my crazy virgins, check that out. That is looking pretty darn sophisticated for nachos, if you agree with me. In they go. That'll be nice and preheated. Around about 10 minutes. I need to get a new oven. My door is just overused now. I'm using it. I'm using the virgin kitchen door so much. 10 minutes in that oven at the temperatures that I'm going to put down below like this, like that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have a little rest. I'm going to sleep like this. Okay, yeah, so basically they are in the oven for 10 minutes as a rough guide. It might take a little less than that, maybe a teeny bit more, but all we're looking for is for that cheese to just melt. Just imagine my hand is cheese right now, uh, and I'm the meat and all the other stuff on it. It's just going to go and join it all together. You know, the meat and all that is already cooked through. We know that. It's all about the cheese melting stuff, and it's going to be kind of messy when we get it out, so I'm excited. Excited face. Right here then guys, that has been 10 minutes. I've taken it out of the oven. It's just this minute stop sizzling. And there we go, the cheese is all melted on there. I'm just gonna scoop a bit out in a minute once it's cooled down. Yeah, not right away, because I'm gonna burn my hands. And I've got myself some ketchup and some brown sauce dips to go with it. I'm excited. Really excited. Right here then guys, so I've got it here. It's still very warm, so I would not recommend you eat it while it is piping hot, especially with the baked beans. But I'm hardcore, I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm just gonna grab Oh my goodness, look at that, look at that, it's all on there. It has worked. Remember, these were extra thick cut potato chips. Um, that's crisp. So I'm gonna dip it in my tomato sauce. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Here we go. Wow, that, that, that is darn down face slappingly good. Thank you, Johan, for that recipe suggestion. I can't believe it worked. I'm really happy. Um, I probably wouldn't eat this all on my own. It's definitely like a party snack. But if I can make it, absolutely anyone in the world can. Have a go for yourself. Put your own twist on it. Let me know how you get on. And I'll see you again next time. Cheers then.